So uh, today we're talking about uh, keynotes and callouts, or callouts and keynotes. Um, make this smaller, and um, you know, uh, not uh, not necessarily the most glamorous topic, but something that we all have to do is annotate our drawings, and um, there's lots of different ways to do it. Um, for years and years, I resisted using the call out tool and just did everything manually. And you know, maybe many people still do that, perhaps even some people on this call um, or in this meeting. But um, but there is a better way, and there's a you know, it's a there's some nuances to using this tool. So I thought it'd be helpful to to discuss all of that. Uh, so let me start by going over here to a uh, 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 sheet layer for this uh, little project here, and I'm going to turn off my viewport updates, or it'll, you know, drive me kind of crazy. Um, and, um, you know, if I just uh, go over here to the side, and uh, maybe I'll just, uh, you know, duplicate this elevation just uh, for the fun of it. Right, there we go. So, you know, um, typically in the old days, I would do my notes something like this. Um, and then I, you know, do a text block and then I might duplicate it, right? And then edit that to, um, Right, something like that, whatever. And then there's a legacy tool that I still keep in my uh, worksheet, the leader line. Um, I'm not even sure, I, that may not even be, I, I guess that's not technically a le legacy tool, but the leader line simple is. And so I would just, you know, um, use this tool and go ahead and make a leader here. And uh, then if I needed to do that again, then I would, uh, you know, do that and so forth. And, uh, you know, I worked like that for years or sometimes perhaps do some arcs by three points, right? If you want something a little more uh, sinuous and then, um, Let's go ahead and put a end marker on that. Right, so we could do that that way, for example, and so forth. And then, you know, these are all individual lines. And so it's fine to draw it that way. It's a couple of extra steps, but then when it's time to change or move things around, it just, it just gets to be a, a big hassle. So I'm not really sure why I was so stubborn about this. Um, uh, in hindsight, I should have started using the fallout <laughs> uh, tool a lot earlier. But anyway, so so we have this tool, and then the other the other limitation of doing this kind of um, sort of manual annotation is if you want to do what I've done here, which is to have an actual keynote, which I'll I'll circle back. There's there's not a great way to keep track of all of these things. If you're uh, manually, um, you know, maybe you create a symbol for yourself that's just a box with a, an adjustable um, piece of text in it, kind of like a data tag. And, um, and in, in fact, you could use a data tag uh, for that kind of thing. But then there's, it's, it's hard to manage the, the legend that sort of tells you what all these things are. So, um, so, so if you want to go from callouts to actual keynotes, uh, where something is just enumerated and then listed on the side, it gets it gets even harder uh, to do it to do it manually. So, uh, enough about that. Let's let's go to the actual tool itself. So, in most of these cases, I'm pretty sure I've just annotated these uh, these keynotes in the annotation space um, uh, proper. 
And so, um, so you can see if I if I uh, click on that, right? Let's look at that in the object info palette. You see that it's a it's call it's a dedicated object, a, a call out, right? And it has a an identifier in this case, right? So I'll just go ahead and use this tool, which in I think the standard workspace lives behind the text tool. It certainly does in my workspace. And and let's look at the settings. So first of all, you can either draw from where the note would be and point towards the object that you're annotating, or you can uh, do it the other way around, uh, draw from the uh, point that you want to um, a note, and then uh, your your gesture you would gesture back towards the text itself. I'm kind of used to doing it the first way, and you can either have a single or a, a single line segment or a two line segment, a two point or a three point mode. Um, and then if uh, you click on the um, settings here for the call out preferences, uh, here's here's everything that you've got here. So um, uh, in this case, uh, I can get text from a database, and I'm going to talk about this at length a little bit later. So uh, we can just um, let that go for the, for the moment. It's it's an important topic that we need to sort of address in depth. Um, I could either place it as a keynote or just place it as a callout. So I'm going to deselect that, and uh, I can specify a maximum text width. Now notice that's in green. Right, and so what uh, what that means is simply that um, because it's in green, that's the sort of the paper space. So not not to scale, but if you were to actually put a ruler down on the paper, that's how wide the text block would be. I'm going to change it to an inch. Okay, and you can uh, automatically uh, adjust the vertical position or put it to the top, the center, the bottom of the line, or above the shoulder. Uh, likewise, the uh, text can be to the left or to the right or automatically determined. And the text alignment can be automatic or uh, left, right, center justified, however you want. And then you can format the text. So you can specify a font that you want to use and font size and so forth. And in this case, for a leader type, I'm going to go with a line. And uh, here's my marker. It's just right there from my uh, from my list. And when I change all of these settings, I can make those true for all my documents or for the active document only since I'm uh, demonstrating here and I might fiddle with the settings to something I wouldn't normally do, then I'm just going to go ahead and uh, make that just for this document alone. Uh, I give myself a, a text margin. The default is uh, 0.047, uh, and I don't need to box the text, but I can. Um, I'll just go ahead and, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and do a box for now. We can play with that. All right, so now that I've got this this note, you can see that I'm, I've am i got this little uh, ghosted text block that's in the drawing here. Right, and so wherever I click, that's where the text block is going to start. And then I can uh, let me do that again. And I'm just going to point over here to this edge, and I'm going to uh, write a note. So in this case, uh, it'll just be, um, you know, uh, dashed line of roof of. And I'll correct my spelling. No, really. There we go. And you know, you can see I've got this single straight line. It's boxed, right? And all of that I can I can go ahead and and change. I can edit that from the object info palette. So I could set the maximum te text width to say three quarters of an inch, or an inch and a half. And it resizes itself, the text resizes itself depending on the width of the text box. Um, I can have uh, a rounded rectangle, 
uh, for my note. Uh, I could do a cloud, uh, a bracket, which you know looks like that. You know, you can just play with all of the different uh, note options. Um, quite a few here that that weren't in the original iterations of the tools uh, or a circle. Yeah. So let's just go with none for now. And I don't really like this sort of straight line here, so I'm just going to delete that and let's go ahead and do the tool again. And this time I'm going to do by two point. All right, you can see now I get have a little a little shoulder, and I can go ahead and point to there, and it remembers the last note I wrote. So there we go, and I may want the vertical position to be top. All right. Uh, oh. Uh, don't understand. Bill's question. Yeah, so the box just shows an actual box around it, Bill. Um, if I have none, then, you know, I have none. Uh, does that, you can unmute yourself if that's easier for you to ask your question or make your point. Made the text, the whole box disappear. I thought it was the call out box with a text box inside it. So, okay, now it makes sense. No, no, no. Yeah, it's two separate things, right? So the box is, it's, it's, it's the border style, if you will, right? Um, so, um, like that, you know, rounded rectangle and so forth. And then, um, so I typically don't, don't show those. I just, you know, that that's just a lot of boxes all over the drawing. Um, but maybe for one special note that you really want to call out, you might box it if it's something that's, you know, you want to be, uh, you want to emphasize. Um, so, so, um, so those are the settings, and you know, of course, you can you can play with them once you've drawn it. For example, if I scroll down here in the object info palette, you can see that at the bottom, uh, if you can see that kind of small text instead of line, I could make this an arc, right? Or I could make it a bezier, right? And if I make it a bezier, then I can go ahead and play with the handle points. So if you've got a a note in a in a hard to reach uh, area, right? I can point, change where it's pointing to, right? And, you know, do something like that. Now, this point here, the is uh, sort of governs where, like, because this shoulder here, this last straight line segment is sort of a fixed width. When I move this, I'm moving the whole, the whole text uh, box or the whole, excuse me, call out, right? Um, so, so that's, you know, that's another option. If I make it back into a line, then it's just gonna be this straight line segment from the shoulder over to here. And so now it's suddenly inter interfering with my, with my um, <clears throat> other graphics. So I may wanna play with that. All right, well, great. So I've got one, that's, that's great. Let's go ahead and add another one. Uh, I'll put it over here and uh, just call this uh, plywood floor. Yeah. And uh, my default is to have a box. So rather than change it, let me go back to my settings with nothing selected and change that from bubble style from box to none. And uh, change the maximum text width to 0.75 as a default. So like any setting, when I have nothing selected and I change the settings, then that goes ahead and um, uh, changes the settings for any any future callouts. Uh, right, so uh, here I could do, uh, you know, uh, uh, dashed line of rafter above. So now, because I, I I changed the settings to eliminate the the box outline with nothing selected, now any future callouts are going to have uh, that particular feature. So you know, here it is. It's it's uh, it's all on that side. You can see that I've been rather messy with how I've uh, aligned these. So maybe I want to go ahead 
and move this over to the uh, left side of the drawing. So I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, grab this handle point here. And you can see that when I drag the, the handle point, not the shoulder, right? Then the text automatically realigns itself uh, to be um, how I, you know, to the, to the left of, of the line. And that's because the horizontal position and horizontal text alignment are all set to be automatic. Now, sometimes you, you don't want to do that, right? Sometimes you may want to have your, your note here, for example, and you may want to kind of have your arrow go back behind the note. That's, as I was sort of taught, that's not ideal, but sometimes you just need to do that. Um, right. And so you can see, uh, back up here, it's a really long arrow. You can see that when I do that, it automatically flips over to the other side. So if I don't want it to do that, then instead of horizontal position auto, I would just set the horizontal position to be to the left, which, you know, nothing changes when I do that. But now if the arrow goes back behind the insertion point of the of the call out, you can see that it, it allows me to do that without flipping um, without flipping the text. Uh, I got something else in the chat. Ah, Gail has a question about alignments. Yeah, yeah, I'll, 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 I'll get to that in just a second, Gail. That's a great question. Um, so, so, you know, when I move the, the note from this control point here, when it has a shoulder, right, that moves the whole note. But notice that the, the arrowhead or the, the marker stays stays fixed. So uh, you can kind of think of this as being the insertion point. In fact, it is the insertion point of the note. And everything to the left is sort of one follows one set of rules and everything to the right follows another set of rules. Now, you know, I could just to, to Gail's point, I could align this note and then slide it up and then, you know, move this around and so on. Uh, if I wanted to, let me change this person over here to uh, dash line roof above and I'll move that up. Okay, uh, but uh, all of this is like, is uh, nice and jumbled. I've been intentionally uh, fairly careless about how I do, do this. So if I select all of these uh, call outs and I go to my modify menu under a line, uh, you can see that the very last align command is align distribute leader lines. Um, uh, a little pro tip, uh, I, if I'm not mistaken, by default, align to grid gets this shortcut. Uh, at least it did a few versions ago. And I really, um, having nothing to do with callouts, I really don't like the align to grid command. Um, not that it isn't useful, it is, but, um, if you inadvertently hit it with a shortcut, um, you might find that a bunch of things shift, but because they're aligning to the grid, they shift almost imperceptibly. And so now you've moved your geometry around and it could be days or weeks before you realize that you did and now things that were where they were supposed to be have been just slightly nudged away from where they um, used to be and could could pose a little problem for you down the line. So um, in order to avoid that um, that problem, I, I tend to edit my workspace to eliminate any keyboard shortcuts to align to grid. For one thing, uh, for another thing rather, align to grid is something that, you know, I very rarely need to use. So it doesn't really need a keyboard shortcut. Align distribute leader lines though really needs a keyboard shortcut because it, it gets used a lot. So I've just reassigned the common shortcut for align to grid to align distribute leader lines. And that command looks like this. It's super useful. So um, number one is your shoulder point, which is really the insertion point, right? As we discussed. Um, so I can align my shoulder points or my label points or both. Um, typically I, I'm going visually by where the label point is. So I'll deselect aligns shoulder points. And then you can either move the shoulder points or not. 
depending on, on what you want to do. And then vertically, you can have equal distance between shoulder lines or parallel uh, objective lines, which are these angled lines, which I'm not crazy about, or none. And usually I leave mine as, as none. And so having done that, once I hit OK, I get this little plus sign here. And then I just draw, a, uh, hold down my shift key to get a nice straight line. And I just draw a vertical line with that tool and hit and release it. And then you can see that all of my notes have now perfectly aligned along the shoulder point and the insertion points are just scattered wherever they are. Now, if I undo that and I go and align distribute again, and this time I align the shoulder points and I do the same thing, you'll see what the difference is. You can see that now I'm aligning to the shoulder points, I'm aligning to the insertion points. So now all the length from the insertion point to the note is, those are all equal, right? Which eh, not necessarily what I wanna do. Um, so again, I'm gonna go back to my, to my old settings and um, I could of course not, uh, align the label points and only align the shoulder points. But if I do that, now the text is sort of willy-nilly all over the page. So that's usually not my preferred option either. Is there a way to select all three of those? And isn't there in the object info box, I forget the name of the line that connects the box to the shoulder. You can make those all the same. Yeah, yeah. Over here in the three callout options, right? I could go ahead and make the um, uh, let's see the where is it the uh, leader angle is the same. Uh, is it my text margin? Oh, shoulder length right shoulder. here. So I could make my shoulder length right a quarter of an inch. Um, that's going to be like real world dimensions, not page dimensions. So I'm at a quarter inch scale here. So um, and I can, you know, extend the shoulder all the way to the text or not. I like to have that little margin. So yeah, Bill, I could I could do that. Um, aesthetically, and this is, you know, just a, a highly personal choice. Um, I don't really care if all my shoulders are different lengths. In fact, I, I kind of like them to be different lengths um, just because it um, kind of gives some variety to the, to the, to the drawing. But, you know, up, up to you. If you want all of them to be the same, then they can be. It also doesn't confuse. If they're all the same, it looks like you confuse it as an architectural element. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <clears throat> um, so, th so those are the basics of using just the tool in terms of its of its um, graphic qualities, um, if you will. And um, uh, if that's all the tool did, I would say it's it's definitely still worth using over the over the manual system of having separate line segments and and text blocks. Um, just because it, it helps make your graphics consistent, it's you know, easy to distribute them with the align tool. You don't have to move the text and find the lines and move them together. It that alone just sort of makes it um, uh, worth worth using. Well, and one of the benefits, Francois, is that if you want to have the same note in several places on the drawing, <clears throat> you can just copy and paste that note, right? You know, so if yep. the line above rafter, if you wanted to show that in a couple of places or on a, on a couple of different viewports, like in this case, if you had three, three viewports, you could use that same note. Absolutely. Yep. And that's without, without even using a, a database. Right, right. I can just, I can just, uh, you know, if I really want to make the point, I can just option drag this guy over here and, uh, you know, point over there and then it readjusts. And, uh, you know, I can go ahead and move the insertion or, you know, play with all of that. And now I've got the same note in two places. Now, um, you know, one of the things that is a little, um, 
let's see. Uh, where'd it go? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So if I want to edit the note here, there we go. I can, let's, I'm going to deliberately, you know, uh, make a common spelling or typing error. So now I've got this note and, um, you know, it's here, it's correct over here, it's incorrect over here. So one of the, the nice things about the callout tool is that it also responds to the text menu to uh, find or place text. So I can go ahead and replace all text, um, including uh, inside um, viewports, and I can write uh, DA dash space D line and change that to dashed line. Um, and it'll find, I guess I make that mistake a lot. So there it is, it's, it's, uh, it's fixed it, it's fixed it here and you know, it didn't need to do that, to do that there. And of course, um, uh, perhaps I've decided that um, dash line of roof above doesn't really work for me. So I'll just copy that and I'll go and text, find, replace text. I'll paste that. I'll paste it in the second field. And then uh, I'll say a dash line of edge of roof above, right? I'm just making something up here just for fun. So um, so now it's gone ahead and, and, uh, and fixed that for me. Right, so the fact that the keynote responds to find replace text uh, is um, is another nice nice little feature. I'm sorry, I said keynote. I meant call out. <laughs> um, now uh, let's look at if we want to start using these and a, a sort of a better way of doing this is instead of you know, dragging and copying and pasting is that I can actually start to organize all of my notes into a database. Um, and there's a couple of different ways of, of doing that. And I don't have a one size fits all um, answer as to, you know, what is the, what is the best way for, for you to do it. So let's go to this note here and you'll see that under database, when I, when I, when I double click on the note, I get to this uh, edit note um, uh, dialog box. I can also get to it just by clicking edit note over here in the object info palette. So you'll notice that this is not affiliated with any database, but I can go ahead and uh, just for the sake of argument, I'll just go ahead and create um, a database. And um, uh, or I can choose one that uh, already exists. So in this case, I already have one in this uh, same folder and it's this callout file and um, it's an XML file. So as an XML file, it's something that you can edit with a, a text editor. Um, these databases can get quite large uh, over the years. Uh, Mine is uh, is well past due for some spring cleaning. Um, but the nice thing about a database is now that you can collect all of your notes uh, either in a central location for all of your projects. So you could have one notation database for all projects, which is not how I operate, but you could do that. Or you could have a database for each individual project and either duplicate the database from an old project into a new project and then edit it um, or start from scratch every single time, however you wanna do it. So in this case, I'm, I'm establishing the path to the database. And then there's this little gear wheel over here to the right. And I want to click on that and make sure that I choose path relative to current document. And uh, the reason I wanna do that is, uh, is for two reasons. One is uh, if I move the drawing and I move the uh, call out with it, they, they go together and that sort of makes sense for the way that I organize my hard drives. Um, the other well, reason is, yes? 
Yeah, Francois, one, one, uh, uh, go ahead and finish that and I'll, I'll turn in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, 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 the other reason to do it this way is that um, um, in, in our office, which is you know quite small, but there's still more than one person in it. In, in our office, uh, we're sharing files uh, constantly over Google Drive. So having the path relative to current document, whether you use Google Drive or Dropbox or Box or Vectorworks Cloud Services, whatever, uh, for your, for your uh, cloud storage, means that I don't, it doesn't break that link, right? There's, there'll be a duplicate of the callout database in my folder, and then there'll be a duplicate um, of that callout database in everybody else's uh, project folders. And so by, by making sure that, that that link is clicked, then nothing gets, gets broken. Uh, now, if you follow the model where you have one centralized database for all of your um, notes, for all of your projects, then you probably want to choose absolute path, uh, or at least maintain like a pretty solid um, uh, file hierarchy. So having done that, here uh, you can see that in this upper portion here, because I can get to have quite a lot of notes, right? I can divide my notes into sections or chapters. So. Um, uh, here's how these are divided. Again, my notes are database is kind of uh, it, it, it's a bit long in the tooth and it really needs to be cleaned up, but it's just kind of a big job, so I haven't gotten to it. Um, so you can see, you know, there's some things that need to be cleaned up, like roof plan is A2, but A2 is also elevations and sections, which doesn't really make much sense. But it, Anyway, you can name these sections whatever you want. You can have lots and lots of them or just a few. Uh, I like to organize them so that, you know, I kind of make sense to uh, locate notes that tend to go on one kind of sheet together. Uh, but there may be different ways that you want to notate them uh, to, to organize your notations. Um, however you want to do it is, is fine. So within this wall sections notations, you can see that I have lots of notes. Let me go over to plan, right? And so when I go to plan, I have another whole set of notes here. And so just looking through those may be kind of time consuming. So I'm just gonna look for a dashed line. And look, there's a dashed line. Uh, there's lots of dashed lines of roof overhang above. And this one even occurs twice, right? So I'm going to go ahead and double click that. And if I want to, I can um, uh, uh, hit the notes manager and it'll automatically find it within the same database and I can edit it. And uh, what I really recommend is that you use the first 42 characters, click this text box over here. Um, and the reason for that is you can edit the note text and it will automatically um, change the description to be kind of a, a 42 character preview of that note. Um, if you don't check that box, you might change dash line of roof overhang above to something completely different, like, you know, a line tile grout or whatever, but the preview will still say dashed line of roof overhang above. So, if you have this deselected, the, pre, the description text and the note text are completely independent. If you have this selected, then the description text is just the first 42 characters of the note itself. And that's a much better way to see the notes in the list. So I'll hit OK um, and, uh, and hit OK. And it'll ask me, prompt me if I want to save the database changes, and I, I do. And then I get this dialog box, which, you know, I usually just breeze through, but it's really important. So I want to take a second to, to point this out. It's essentially asking me if I want to do a mass find and replace text to change all of the instances of this note. So in other words, um, uh, well, just what I said. If I, if I hit yes, then all of the instances of that note are gonna be updated <clears throat> to whatever edits I made. And if I hit no, then they'll be left alone. But um, the problem with that is 
uh, now those notes are disassociated from the database, and I want to keep them as associated as possible. That's kind of the point of the database. So I'll hit yes and make sure I've got this one selected. I'll hit OK. And there you'll see that it changed that to dashed line of roof overhang above. Now, um, it didn't change it here, and it didn't change it here, right? Well, that's the rafter note. Here's uh, because this this note isn't affiliated with a database. No. So I'll go ahead and affiliate it and make sure that I choose that. <clears throat> and so now these both these notes are both affiliated with the same entry in the database. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so if I change one, then it's going to change both of them and therefore all of them. <clears throat> Don, you were going to say something, um, and I had to catch my breath. Yeah, yeah. So um, I, I, I'm not sure that I did it by section, and mm -hmm. I never knew exactly which database that I was um, was uh, you know trying to get to. But I use databases, you know, for kind of like you did under sections for you know demo, floor plan notes, interior mm -hmm. elevation notes, exterior elevation notes, so that I, I, one I didn't have to recreate those each time, right? Um, and I could just tailor them to each project. But the other benefit for me was that I could look and see, oh, I forgot the biohazard waste receptacle with all of this information attached to it for the interior elevations. Um, and so it also helped me as a checklist mm. for each of the sheets. I would scroll down through there and go, oh, yeah, I need to call that out too. Um, so anyway, just one, one additional sort of benefit of, of uh, having them sectioned by, you know, demo interior, you know, by, by sheet or by, by use. Yeah, that's a great point. I hadn't uh, hadn't thought of that. Um, <clears throat> so you can see uh, I've I've got a ton of notes just in this one section alone, right? Um, and so the, the, this is sort of a, a a consequence of having just copied a database from an old project and just edited it, which basically means adding notes to it even though there may be some very, very project specific, like infinity drain, S Tifa series, linear S, uh, chances are pretty good. I'm not using this note in every single project. It should probably go, right? Um, so anyway, um, it, if you use a database, it's, it's, it's really quite powerful because you can ensure consistency across all of your notes and you can you know, use it as a checklist as Don just pointed out. Uh, but it does require some, you know, care, maintenance, and uh, and feeding. So, um, the, but the thing that I really want to, most important thing to emphasize is uh, try to keep the path relative to the current to the current document as opposed to an absolute path. Again, depending on how you organize your project files, that's important. And and the other really important one is in the in the notes manager down here. Uh, when you edit a note, make sure that you have the first 42 characters of the note for the description. It's um, you you will you will avoid uh, an embarrassing and possibly costly mistake <laughs> if you if you have that selected. Um, uh, that but that's kind of the that's kind of the skinny on on databases there's right, a so lot to look at yeah yeah no. if you're accessing a master database and you want to create like you've done here one for that project or yeah or growing set how do you, how do you go about doing that uh, again the databases access and and that to them has always been a, a bit fuzzy for me yeah, so typically I keep my database in the same, I, 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 the way I organize my projects is that I put all my Vectorworks drawings in a single subfolder for the, for the project. And then I have other subfolders for like PDFs or project information or client notes or just, you know, um, surveys, whatever. So all of my Vectorworks documents are in one, are in one 
subfolder. And that's where the callouts database goes because I have a separate callout for each project. I'm not saying that's the best way to do it. I'm just saying that's kind of how I've come to do it. And, if and I how, wanted, how hmm? is that created? Uh, I guess is the oh the first uh, time yeah a, a, a long long time ago I went to Notes Manager and I clicked New over here and did a, a new database. Okay. Um, and then I started adding notes to it and in, in sections. Okay. So you could just take a database copy it over and then just start calling through it or whatever no so, no yeah. i could i could oh, yeah okay. yeah so that's and that's that's what i do now except for the calling through it part <laughs> okay <laughs> just, all right you know they're just kind of this like woolly untamed you know garden um and and they definitely need some cleaning up um, but, but yeah, so, so initially you would have started that as a new document, an XML file, which you can edit with a text editor at your, at your, be careful, you can break it. Um, or, um, or you can just copy one into your project folder and just keep going. Well, and, and um, isn't, uh, uh, Vectorworks loaded with some standard notes in, in various things in their regular yeah. database yeah absolutely if i just go right here under vectorworks libraries defaults notes callouts here's um here's how they do it you know doors equipment it's not you know it's not an exhaustive list it's just to kind of give you an idea of how to you know how to use the tool um and i'm sure that there's like libraries somewhere um uh, maybe Keith could uh, speak to that if, if Keith, if you know of any sort of more robust. But you know, I'm on a point. You, head, but I'll 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 reach out and ask. Yeah. Um, of course, you know. Um, just note the disclaimer, <laughs> uh, which kind of kind of makes sense, right? It's like uh, VectorWorks doesn't want to annotate your drawings for you. Um, I mean, Vectorworks, the program, will annotate your drawings for you, but the company obviously doesn't want to be responsible for your notes. Um, so yeah, you can you can definitely uh, go off of a central library, in which case you just want to have a path set up so that every project folder can find it. And if you're using um, cloud file management, you can you can go back to it and not not have that link be broken all the time. Sometimes we get a little sloppy and uh, we copy a drawing over, but we don't copy the callouts file. So, um, and so one project is referring to the callout notes from another project. And that's a bad idea because now if you edit the callouts, you're editing the callouts for another project that may not be appropriate and that that can get you into trouble so it's um that's kind of the downside of having a universal call out uh database is that if you have notes that are conflicting um you know you you, you may end up just using the wrong the wrong note but i mean you know i think but you I can physically it, copy that database file into ab absolutely yeah project. it's just it's just a tiny little XML file. It's like, you know, it's, it's just, it's just a big, I, in fact, I can show you what it looks like. Uh, let's see. I really don't want to see these apps here. Uh, you could open that file in Excel, can't you? Uh, you, you can open it in all kinds of things. I did. Uh, I'm going to, I'm opening mine here. I mean, let me go ahead and share my screen. When I did that, it's the way I do my notes in one of my projects by putting the more general first, like for example, materials, I would say stud, then it would say six inch, and then I would say, you know, I would go from the general to the specific, and I thought, well, I want the contractors to think about that. They didn't have a problem with it, I thought it was interesting, but it made my, making sure I could find my notes easier, and it gave a sense of general to specific, which was kind of interesting. Yeah, it's a cool way to do it. So um, you should be able to see now, this is just a text file of uh, the callouts. And 
you know, the problem is, is that all the callouts get these unique hexadecimal strings, like under the hood, they have this serial number associated with them, this uh, UUID. So, um, you you wouldn't want to add new callouts here directly. Then this is just text edit, right? You wouldn't want to add callouts here by like copying one line and duplicating it and then editing it. That would that would be that would fail. Um, but if, for example, I wanted to take this infinity drain note that we talked about earlier and just delete it and hit save, let's see what that does. Uh, can is is uh, the vectorworks? You guys see our the vectorworks drawing? No, just your database. Okay, let me do a new share. There we go. All right, now, yeah, I think you see it now. So now you can see over here um, that note is gone. It used to be here, and I deleted it from the XML file, and um, and now it's it's uh, it's gone from the from the database. You so, can delete it right there too, right? I could delete it right there too. Yeah, but okay. it's just like now I'm just kind of moving, and it's probably better to do it within Vectorworks because then you you're you're certain not to kind of break the syntax of the file so that it becomes unusable. Um, but um, Anyway, um, so so yeah, it, once once you've you've got a few years of a, of a of a accreted notes, it, it it can be a thing to manage. Um, so uh, we've talked about this as callouts, but you can see that obviously over here I have these as keynotes, right? So that is just the same exact same tool. Only I've checked the button here to place as a keynote. And uh, when you place it as a keynote, there is a default, there is a legend that is associated with it. So if I exit this viewport, you can see that down here, I've got this legend. <coughs> and as I was, Sort of tinkering around and adding notes and so forth it kept adding things to this legend so it didn't used to fill the page but now it does All right and you can see that i have this uh this na over here so um i can double click on the legend and then it'll show it to me and then uh i can go ahead and um highlight all of these and make them a relative path. All right. I can go back to the notes manager and uh, point point it to uh, my call out. So so that's another way of of, uh, of getting to my um, call out database is from this keynote legend. And again, you only get this legend if you place your call outs and select them as keynotes. Now, uh, notice this number 20 is, is NA. So I'll just go and, um, sorry, cancel. And I can um, remove gaps down here. And now item 20 is gone. And I can reuse unused positions. And that didn't do anything because there aren't any unused positions. Um, and let's see, I'm trying to think. Um, ba, ba, ba. And it does renumber the yeah. other number, which is a huge benefit. Yep, it 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 renumbers them. Um, um, it it does renumber them. Well, what makes you decide to use keynotes versus callouts? All right. Well, uh, there's two there's two reasons. Um, there's several several reasons to use one versus the other. I, and can I just put a pin in that question and get back to it in about a minute? 
So the other thing about the legend is that you can format the text, right? So I can make the title text. Um, uh, well, I did not mean to do that. I did not mean to make it one point. I meant to make it 11 points. And then the body text, I'll put that down to seven so that it fits on the drawing. So, um, so one, one back to your question, Bill, why, why use keynotes versus callouts? Uh, part of it has to do with culturally what um, what the uh, builder and trades are used to seeing. Um, in commercial projects, uh, callouts are, are or keynotes rather are quite common, and uh, they're they're less common in residential projects, in my experience anyway. And so um, I I would be very reluctant to use um, uh, keynotes on a residential project. So that's one reason. The other reason is, uh, even though heh, I'm saying this as I'm showing you this tiny little, re like tiniest imaginable residential project, I said, um, the, in this case, I used it because I was trying to cram everything into an, uh, a single 11 by 17 uh, sheet. Um, and so so I went ahead and, and broke my rule and put everything sort of in, in one sheet. Um, so, so it could be a layout decision or it could be a kind of a, a building typology and sort of trade decision but whether I do one or the other. The other advantage of it, Francois, in my experience, and again, this is one of the only automated things that I've used in Vectorworks for, for decades, uh, is that you can be long-winded um, and if you you know you so you can put a paragraph as your keynote saying you know plastic laminate number two with the east edge and blah 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 mm -hmm. and um, and if you had that all over a drawing like this you'd have no room for all of the notes so you can essentially use it as like a mini spec yeah <clears throat> Yeah, exactly. Um, now there, there is one. Um, th there's a couple of issues that you need to be aware of with um, with keynotes and legends, and that is that each legend is a unique object, right? And uh, you can name it whatever you want. Like I just named it notes. Um, but if I had a sheet of drawings here with um, uh, a bunch of keynotes on it. And then I had a second, this is a one sheet drawing set. So not the case here, but if I had a second sheet with a bunch of keynotes, each sheet would get its own legend. So let me, let me flip over to another document to kind of illustrate what I mean here. Um, can you guys see this, uh, this uh, little three uh, paned uh, interior elevations, floor plan, medical office? Yes. Yes, you bet. Okay. Yep. All right. Great. So, so here's an example, right? Where uh, over here I've got a floor plan A1. Uh, in this window, I've got an interior elevation A31. And in this one, I've got A32. Right. And uh, here are my keynotes. And if you look closely, you'll see that. Um, oh, I've got a I've got a typo. That's cool. And I've got the exact same typo. So you can see that on, on all of these sheets, the notes are all identical. And they're numbered identically. Um, and and that's, not, that's not normal. <laughs> um, normally, each, each sheet layer would just give you a legend for whatever keynotes were on that sheet layer. And so uh, microwave on countertop by owner could be note 42 on one, sh one sheet. It could not appear on another sheet and it could be note number 55 on a different sheet. And so what I've done here is uh, in order to avoid that, I wanted all of the notes to appear on all of the sheets and for them to be numbered identically. Um, and so the way I did that is if you if I click on this, you can see that this keynote legend is not a keynote legend. It is a viewport. 
So let's double click that and go to the design layer. And you can see that what I've done is in this project, I have a, a design layer. And the only thing on that design layer is the keynote legend. And then I just viewport it in next to the title block. That's a viewport, that's a viewport, and they're all viewports of the same um, keynote, uh, the same layer. And so now, um, I mean, I couldn't have planned this better. So now if I go into here and I go to scheduled door and I edit it, right, I can fix my typo. Hit OK. Hit OK. And uh, I fixed it here. And of course, because it's a viewport, it's now fixed here. And it's now fixed over here. <laughs> and so by doing that this way, and let me go back to this viewport, by doing that this way, um, I've got my, my floor plan, right? Uh, my reflected ceiling plan, my interior elevations, all of those have the same sort of keynotes on sheets that have keynotes. Um, and, and then we're good. And I'm not, you know, I'm not required to uh, do that everywhere. So, for example, um, yep, on, on this sheet, right, I've got some details of how I want my doors trimmed. And, uh, and, and here, um, I can just do a, um, you know, I don't have to have call outs. I, I've, I've just done these call outs uh, just as um, call outs, uh, not as keynotes. I need to go back to the design layer because those are actually on a layer. So, so that's a, that's, that's maybe referring back to the same database because the same database can populate keynotes or callouts because it's really just a different display of the same tool. Um, but um, it doesn't have to show up necessarily uh, in the legend. Uh, so, so I can kind of mix, mix and match um, if, if that makes sense. Francois? Yes, sir. Another uh, workaround that I've done on that, because I don't care if my floor plan call out notes are the same numbers as my interior elevation ones. But if I have four sheets of interior elevations, uh, what I had done, and this came from Mark uh, back in the day, I will take my interior elevation sheets and stack them one on top of the other so yeah. that they're all part of uh sort of one sheet layer and that way i can have a master uh call out list uh, and then all of the interior elevation keynotes on the interior elevations are all the same but there's actually only one legend like on the last page or whatever or first page right 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 so you're talking about over here in this middle pane you would actually just compose this sheet layer as four different or three different or seven different sheets. Exactly. <clears throat> Same with yeah. exterior elevation. So I might have uh, two sheets stacked on top of each other that have all of the exterior elevations or, or you know, similar. Right, yeah. And, and the reason I don't do that and I use this viewport workaround is because um, it, it messes with my automatic drawing coordination. So, because I only have in 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 your method, I only have one sheet that has four pages composed up onto it. Uh, Vectorworks doesn't recognize it as four individual sheets, <clears throat> so it it kind of creates a a bit of a a bit of a problem with with uh, automatic drawing coordination. So I, I, I came up. It. Yeah, I haven't checked it with that. Uh, so yeah, yeah. Uh, but but actually, Don, it was you who kind of, uh, or at least your situation, kind of gave me the idea for doing this kind of viewport uh, um, workaround to ensure kind of a consistent um, numbering and display of all of my keynotes across 
different drawings just because yeah i i'd noticed when uh when working with you that 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 could turn into a rough problem is there a way to change in keynotes the shape of the you have a square around your number it's going to be a hexagon or a circle or around oh yeah absolutely sure sure you use keynotes so that's an interesting thing uh So if you don't like squares, um, uh, your your box. Uh, let's see, where is it? Uh, somewhere here. Do, 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 do. Oh yeah, over here. I can do all those things. I could do clouds. I can do brackets. I could do uh, rounded rectangles. I could do hexagons. Um, that is really cool because in my world, we probably use different shapes or different kinds of notes that I'm doing, like one for materials and one for placements and things like that. Exactly, exactly. And if you don't like, if you're doing like a bubble and you don't want to auto fit, right? Then you can specify um, the maximum text width could be like 0.5, for example. Mm -hmm. No, it's not fixing it. Yes, it oh, uh, there it is. Maximum bubble width. Make that like an eighth or, you know, whatever. Whatever it ends up being that sort of fits your text nicely. <coughs> you could do that. Yeah, that's a great point. Uh, oftentimes you'll see like more in engineering drawings, but right, you'll have like different different bubble styles for different kinds of notes. So maybe MEP is, you know, I don't know, um, hexagons or uh, all of your plumbing could be triangles or, you know, whatever. Although I don't know if triangles are really an, an option, uh, having said that. Um, do, 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 circle. So you, you have a couple of options. Right. Um, I I think I've kind of covered everything on my on my outline here that I wanted to make sure I'm I'm sure I've missed something, <clears throat> but again I would say not to not to flog the horse, but um, you know make sure your database paths if you're using a database, which I recommend is is relative if that makes sense for the work that you're doing or for the way that you organize your files that your path is relative and and absolutely um make sure that that you have that 42 character preview for your notes you will you will be much happier if you if you do that any a... any questions that i have something i haven't covered Ask a question about the went back to the call out tools. Um, often, you know, you have a call out and you want to point with that same call out to do two different places. Oh yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Point in an arrow, but I, there may be a more elegant way to do it that I'm not aware. There, of. there is a totally elegant way of doing it. Are you kidding me? Come on. Um, find it. So uh, oh, cancel that. Let me. Here's one. Oh, I know what you're doing. Oh, and I just right right click on it and add a leader line. Boom. And so long as I keep doing that, I can just add leader lines all day long. And then I can just escape to, to be done with it. And then if I have too many leader lines, right, I can just right click and delete leader lines. Boop. Um. And it it won't some one of these leader lines it considers to be like you know it needs to have at least one leader line so sometimes it won't let you delete sorry delete leader line it won't let you delete a leader line yeah, yeah. it's not letting me delete a leader line. 
I don't know why it's not letting me do that. Well, that's where you do it. I don't know. I never saw that. The other two questions are basically opinions, I think, um, in terms of when you're doing uh, any of these things. Uh, for example, a call out box. I see you have it as a an opaque background. Do you ever have a background? No fill, I should say. Is there don't we do one or the other? I guess because it's legibility aspect of it. Yeah, why if I would have it as opaque or not, or just have a none. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean you you know, you could get super fancy if you wanted. You could make it um, you know, I don't know, um black yeah. and then like yeah. you know, ten percent boom. You can play with your line weights and you know. I, I don't like beefing up the line line weight. If if the box could be a separate line weight than the than the leader, that would be kind of kind of nice. But uh, I think they're, they're, Francois, I, I I used to always do like a a beefed up box with a with just a light leader line, and often I of course would put the shadow on there too because I'm I'm old, but. Yeah uh okay uh let's look at that leader attributes there you go you're right um yeah because you don't want a fat leader line but you might want a fat <clears throat> excuse me a fattened up box yeah yeah so i wonder why if i had that selected why is my and uh, yeah you could shadow the bubble sure um hmm Leader attributes, but why then? Maybe after the fact, I need to change the leader attributes. Yeah, there you go. So then I would need to have no shoulder. And that's kind of what Don's looking for. Yeah, so well, first, I think I was able to do it with shoulders in the past. Well, but been a while since I've been doing that. So. Yeah. Um, and then um, I guess just to leave us with something further to sort of tinker with and explore, um, my understanding is, is that you can get um, a, uh, a keynote-like uh, functionality using the data tag tool but I haven't really played with that to be able to suggest how that would work with a a notes, you know, a notes legend and and databases and so forth. So basically the same thing, isn't it? In terms of a database and referencing numbers and uh yeah, well, you know, in theory, and then there's the actual practice, which anyway. Um, one last question. Of course, of course. Yeah, 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 yeah. Is there a way to, is it possible to have, this is Harlan, have yeah. um, um, the keynotes not be a number so you can kind of combine a call out with like a specification? Like if you wanted to have a call out that says, say, um, you know, air and water barrier, and then in the, and then in the, uh, in the legend have it call out like Tyvek or something like that. So you could have both like a mini spec sheet. Yeah, yeah. Uh... I think that is where you would need something a little more. Uh, so the short answer is, I don't know how to do that um, with this tool. And that may be something that you could do with um, uh, some some custom data tag. There you go. I mean, you know, we I have a few more minutes. Let's look at data tags. I'm I'm guessing if there is a data tag, um, let's look at uh, architecture. Boop, boop, boop. Here's a material note data tag. So I'll select that. Oh, I need to pick one. Um, 
Yeah. Okay. I'm out of my depth here. I'm going to need to do some more research before I can um, answer you on this. I'm just going to, I'm just going to fuss around and, <laughs> uh, but um, that's where, I, that's where I would look. Uh, that's the likeliest place to find that kind of uh, functionality, Harlan, would so be the, with, a, with a, a version of the data tag. Using the call, not the call out tool, but the um, keynote tool, it, it's, it's um, limited to a number being there? Correct. Okay. Yeah, the call out tool and the keynote tool are the same tool. It's just a different, it's just a different presentation. Okay, just so yeah, if, combine them. If I if I look at this object, I can place it as a keynote, right? In which case, it automatically gives it a number. Um, I can see keynote identifier. Yeah, it looks like my only options are numbers. Okay, thank you. Yeah. All right. Any other questions? Uh, Francois, you could add a prefix on there too. So if you wanted um, a, you know. Correct, yes, yes. Yeah, let me go back to my. <clears throat> yep, <clears throat> so for example, for all of my, um, For everything having to do with um, with mill work, right? I could go ahead and have a keynote uh, prefix, prefix yeah. right? Like M for mill work or whatever. And I suppose, so I suppose, Arlen, that would be one way of doing it. It's just you would have um, uh, you would have a very verbose prefix finishes. Well, that's where the bubble shape comes in. One opportunity to use it. Right, right. To have different bubbles for different things. Yeah, you just have, it's just kind of limited as to what bubbles you can have. You know, you've got rectangles, rounded rectangles, hexagons, circles. That's kind of it. For, I mean, in terms of an actual complete shape. Sorry. <clears throat> So Harlan, does that kind of achieve what you're looking for? Not yeah, really. Kind of. I, I was just thinking if you could do a call out because the call out tool works so well for the graphics on the page, and then have an associated um, keynote with it that you could just add more information. That you know, like you have your generic call out, and then a specific um, material, say, for that call out. And I guess that that would work. I, I think yeah. I'd need to play with it a, a little bit. I, yeah, I, you. You could just do like count, counter, and then you would have like counter one, two, three, but then you'd have a different, le you know, you'd have, I don't know. It's one of the things, of thought. one of the things I always did, Francois, was uh, on my call out notes, I would use numbers because that was the default, right? But then I might have a general notes on that same sheet and I would use A, B, C, D uh, so that they wouldn't get confused between call outs and general notes even though because the legends can look exactly the same yeah yeah uh keith is pointing out that that um under if you go to your vectorworks libraries with the data tag tool and uh you go to down here to user defined yeah. uh there's uh uh there's some some options here like a square node and leader But again, uh, I'm telling you that it's there and actually <laughs> using it intelligently, um, just worth some something worth uh, exploring further. Thanks, Keith. Okay, everybody. Well, I really appreciate it. As usual, I'll be posting this to uh, YouTube, uh, warts and all, and. Uh, I guess uh, see you next next month. Thank you. All right. Thanks. Bye bye. Thanks.